um, it's very easy to absorb a kind of lazy narrative, um, a simplistic conflict narrative. The reality is much more complex. Why do you think people have this, this vision, these uh, misconceptions about science and religion? And what do you think are the, the biggest misconceptions in this field? I think the reason why some people have um, misconceptions about the relationship of, of uh, faith and science, or science and religion, or faith and reason, um, is due to many complex factors. Um, there is clearly a, a, a battle for what you might call the big picture of the world going on. So for example, during the French Revolution, on the aftermath of the French Revolution, the tendency was to portray everything that had gone beforehand as ignorant and, and, and evil. And this was the new age of light. We get the phrase enlightenment from this uh, period. And, um, and in fact, they went into Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris and they, they enthroned the goddess of reason on the altar of Notre Dame in Paris. Uh, but I always warn that that very year, the Great Terror began uh, which was marked by cutting people's heads off. So the age of reason began by decapitating people on a large scale. So, so people who say we're in favor of reason, well, see what they do. It's very important to see what they do. Um, but, so, but because of the French Revolution and because of, uh, in England, um, a kind of battle between science and theology in the 19th century, and now we have the new atheist movements, uh, and in Latin America also, the struggle between uh, different forms of government, um, pro and anti-church governments and so on. All these things get mixed up. And so um, it's very easy to absorb a kind of lazy narrative, um, a simplistic conflict narrative. The reality is much more complex. The way I like to think about it is that there have been a, occasional squabbles between people of faith and science uh, in, the, in the Western world. Um, but these are like family squabbles. Uh, generally speaking, the kind of world created by, um, uh, the, first of all, the, 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 the Jewish faith and Judeo-Christian traditions and the things that flow from them and are connected with them, and Greek philosophy and Roman law, that that fertile mix has created um, a world that's very fruitful for science. The, very the idea of a university comes out of that kind of world, that kind of culture. So I think um, we've had our little squabbles, but basically it's been a very fruitful uh, opportunity uh, uh, with faith and reason for developing the full flourishing of the human person in many fields. We know in history uh, that religion always uh, invests a lot in, in science. Do you know if uh, how this happens today, if uh, religion still uh, do science? Um, the very beginning of philosophy. So you go back to Aristotle, and uh, the, he's got a famous book, The Metaphysics. And he gives an example of a history before his time. And he says, well, in ancient Egypt, in ancient Egypt, if, if the priests hadn't had leisure time to do useless things, they would never have invented mathematics. So there's a connection between uh, religion and the birth of mathematics. Um, right at the beginning of our earliest um, civilizational records. Now, um, in, of course, in the Middle Ages, we've got the connection of faith and the universities, um, for example, and, and that that's tradition continues in Latin America. So we have uh, civil universities, but also many religious universities, uh, uh, particularly the Catholic Church, but not exclusively so. Um, and the uh, in, in, in right up to fairly modern times, we've got examples of um, uh, priests and religious contributing to science and um, uh, associated disciplines. So, uh, Georges Lemaitre, the father of the Big Bang Theory, um, Grigor Mendel, the father of genetics. One of my favorite examples is Maria Agnesi. Maria Agnesi was an Italian woman who became the first woman professor of mathematics. And she was appointed by Pope Benedict XIV in 1750. Uh, that's 150 years before the first woman in the United States to get a PhD in mathematics. So there is um, there's a very interesting and rich history. But what about the modern day? So today, science has become very professionalized. And it's also become very, very expensive. So um, 
uh, for most modern European states, we can't afford the big experiments. We have to collaborate uh, across the world in big particle accelerators or um, sp uh, satellites in space, uh, space telescopes and so on. These are massively expensive. So it's gone very hard for, <coughs> obviously, churches, for example, to contribute to this kind of enterprise. Um, but nevertheless, uh, I think uh, churches still today contribute very much to the idea of what I might call a humane education. And the danger I see is that in many of our professional universities, uh, we are um, creating subjects which are very atomized. So people just study a very narrow science, but don't study philosophy, or don't study um, literature, or don't study art. Now someone might say, well that doesn't matter if they just want to be a molecular biologist. Let them concentrate on molecular biology. But there's a danger because, for two reasons. First, um, science itself requires more than science for the big breakthroughs. It requires a kind of imagination. Einstein um, wondered what would it be like to ride on a beam of light. That's, that's a kind of a philosophical imagination. So other mental disciplines are needed than just uh, narrow technical skills for real progress, for the breakthroughs uh, often in the science. Um, but the other, uh, the other is that you know, in, a, in a fragmented society, fragmented disciplines of the university, we create a fragmented world. And this is going to have long-term problems for us in many, uh, many different ways. So I think the church can help to remind us, at least in the institutions I've seen, uh, of the, um, the value of a humane education where the technical skills are developed but also we recognize that human beings are more than machines and the world is more than a machine, um, that uh, there are other aspects of human flourishing. Se você quiser saber mais sobre esse assunto, aqui na descrição a gente vai deixar links e mais informações. E se você gostar desse vídeo, não esquece de curtir, compartilhar, comentar e principalmente se inscreva no canal da TV Nups para não perder nada de novidade que sair.